वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू अनदर वीडियो फ्रॉम द कंप्यूटिंग असिस्टेंट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट जीपीयूज और द ग्राफिक्स प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट अ जीपीयू इज अ स्पेशलाइज्ड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किट चिप दैट इज डिजाइंड टू रैपिडली मैनिपुलेट डेटा टू स्पीड अप द डिस्प्ले ऑफ द ग्राफिक्स ऑन अ विजुअल यूनिट सच एज अ मॉनिटर इन मेनी एप्लीकेशंस बट स्पेशली गेम्स द जीपीयू इज हाईली स्पेशलाइज्ड इन पैरेलल प्रोसेसिंग एंड इट वर्क्स इन कोरिलेशन विद द सीपीयू for a better visual experience with applications so the first question that arises is why do we need a gpu we use the cpu for performing all our computing tasks so why not use the cpu for the graphics as well why invest in another costly chip on the motherboard well in the very early days of computing when we used to have computers for very specialized use cases or when the need for the graphics was not that much the process of using the cpu for all the processes going on in the computer including graphics was fairly usable but as the graphics for the games and other kinds of graphics intensive applications started requiring more and more computing power a very reasonable need was felt for a specialized circuit that could generate graphics and the answer was gpu video games played a pivotal role in the development of the gpus as an essential accessory as they rely heavily on intensive graphics processing in fact the earliest and more powerful gpus have first appeared on the video games consoles rather than the personal computers since the 1970s with the advent of more and more computing power on a single chip and then the development of better display units and other peripherals led to an improvement in the gaming experience also and more and more intensive games started to appear in the market these games required better frame rates and better 3d renderings so this pushed the hardware manufacturers to accelerate the development of better gpus although the real exponential phase in the development of the gpus came in the two decades after 1990 the coming of the guis or the graphical user interfaces also played a big role in pushing the standards and the usage of dedicated graphics card now the question arises that how does a gpu work and how is it different from the cpus well as mentioned earlier gpu works well at the tasks where the manipulation of the graphics rendering is required heavily most of the 3d images of the objects that you see on your displays are made and rendered in the form of many smaller triangles these triangles are represented by three coordinates in the space namely x coordinate y coordinate and the z coordinate now in order to produce moving images these many smaller triangles need to move and transform the color of the vertices of these triangles and also the color of the fragments require different components inside the gpu for the renders which are known as the shaders these processes require a large number of calculations the coordinates of these triangles are also represented in the form of matrices and so a gpu needs to be very good at these kinds of calculations Also since these calculations take in large numbers at the same time during a gameplay it will be a good idea to do these calculations in a parallel manner so a gpu is very good at working parallelly on many different tasks at the same time on the other hand a cpu works in a serial manner this is one of the main differences between the cpu and the gpu which emphasizes the need for a gpu on a computer however that doesn't mean that you cannot use the gpu for the general purpose computing in fact one of the main extended cases of the gpus is the gp gpus or the general purpose graphics processing units these include computer applications where a lot of processing is done in parallel like machine learning and bitcoin mining in fact the emergence of deep learning has dramatically increased the importance of the gpus or more specifically the gp gpus In a research done by Indigo it was found that while training the deep learning neural networks the GPUs can be as much as 250 times faster than the CPUs there has been some competition in this area from the ASIC or the application specific integrated circuits like the TPU or the tensor processing units from Google however these ICs require changes in the existing codes to be functional and hence the GPUs still remain a popular choice for many developers GPUs can exist in many forms like the dedicated graphics card from the AMD and the Nvidia the integrated graphics like the ones from Intel like hybrid graphics and the GP GPUs mentioned before however 
the types of gpus are a long topic to discuss and it shall be covered in a later video historically a lot of companies have produced gpus companies like the japanese multinational corporation fujitsu the texas instruments the japanese corporation sharp which was acquired by taiwan based foxconn the s3 graphics and the ati technologies ati was later acquired by advanced micro devices or the amd in 2006 these are some of the companies that made gpu products at one time or another that made a great impression the list is not an exhaustive one and we cover many more companies and the list can never be completed without including the pride of the gpu manufacturers market amd and nvidia AMD and Nvidia are the companies that make the best GPUs in the market right now. In fact, if we exclude the Intel integrated graphics solution from the list of GPUs, then Nvidia and AMD controlled nearly 100% of the GPU market share in 2018 with Nvidia having nearly 66% and AMD having nearly 33%. This year, the unveiling of the Nvidia's RTX series of the GPUs Featuring ray tracing technologies became the talk of the town among the gaming fans and the tech enthusiasts. They will be covered separately in another video. In addition, S3 Graphics and Matrox produce GPUs. Modern smartphones are using mostly Arduino GPUs from Qualcomm, PowerVR GPUs from Imagination Technologies, and Mali GPUs from ARM. So that's all for this video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please like and share it and subscribe the channel.